What else can Fargo do? Oh, come on, people. Fargo, but if you do this. Fargo, turn off my debit card. I found it! I found my card! And also this. Fargo, turn on my debit card. Do you, Fargo? You can with Wells Fargo. First Alert Radar, powered by Jim Hudson Automotive Group. Live from Augusta, you're watching News 12 at 6 o'clock. Good evening and happy Mother's Day. First, we get the latest from Gaza as his red dazzling display across the CSRA this week on Friday. Not so much last night, and while the moment has passed with, again, not much showing up last night, we might have another strong chance heading into tonight. Audrey Dickerber joins us live in the newsroom now. Audrey, it's beauty created from disruptive solar storms. What do we need to know? These storms have been flying all their colors all over social media since Friday. People have been super excited to see northern lights in their own backyard. It's rare to see a storm like this in the south, and in some extreme cases, these electrical storms can cause issues with satellites, power grids, and communication systems. Luckily, that isn't the case for us here, and we can just enjoy seeing the lights. Even though it wasn't as visible last night, I caught up with a former astrophotographer who says there's a Another chance to catch those lights tonight and it should be easier to see them too. It's a very rare thing to sit, have an aurora come down this far south. Um, auroras of course are always visible, not always visible, but are frequently visible in the very northern you know parts of the planet. Um, if you're in Alaska or if you're in Norway or up in those areas you're probably fairly accustomed to seeing aurora. But to have them come this far south is extremely unusual. Um, the last time this happened was 2003. If you missed the lights or had a hard time seeing them on Friday, he recommends taking a photo with long exposure settings on your phone. That should do the trick. That was my mistake on Friday, so thanks for that, Audrey. I definitely missed out on them on Friday. I was looking up. It was just completely dark outside, but leave it up to the expert, another one of our experts, First Alert Meteorologist Emily Acton. Emily, going into tonight, but also going into this week, we got storms coming right after this solar storm. Yeah, uh, we, we definitely do, and hopefully this cloud cover will clear out for the overnight hours. I'm not 100% convinced on that, but uh, tonight should be at least a little bit more vibrant out there. But again, you're going to have to look for those lights with your camera. Not easy to see with just the naked eye, but right now, when we take a look at current conditions, we're looking... Uh, at I-20 right here at the station, 81 is the current temperature. Feels like 80. Those winds coming from the north or west-northwest, excuse me, at about 9 miles per hour. But overnight tonight, we're going to have another cool night in store for us. We'll cool off into those middle 50s. So very mild start to a wet Monday, unfortunately. So you're definitely going to need the jacket as you head out the door. Probably make it a rain jacket. <laughs> and uh, You're going to need it by the later afternoon and early evening hours. And that rain's going to continue overnight and throughout the day Tuesday where we could see a few thunderstorms embedded in those showers so uh, keep the rain gear on and you're gonna need it several times this week Craig and I'll let you know exactly when coming up rough heading into the week but perfect way to end the week on our most day thanks for that Emily now separate shootings in Atlanta now separate shootings in Atlanta this weekend killed two people injured four others and left three Atlanta police officers injured as well first the shooting at the 1145 lounge overnight. Officers arrived at the club around 2.30 in the morning. At the scene, they found six people shot, including two dead inside. Officials say they believe the shooting started after an argument that turned into a fight inside of the club. The four others that were injured were taken to hospitals where they are expected to recover. There is no word on the suspect. Meanwhile, a witness to a separate shooting that left three Atlanta police officers injured yesterday spoke about being so close to that incident. You heard pop, 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 And from that point, you know, fearing for my safety, I kind of ducked down. It's a little unsettling. I'm just glad none of my children or grandchildren were around to witness any of it. The officers injured in Saturday's shooting were 28 and two 31-year-olds. One was released from the hospital overnight, and the other two have surgery scheduled. They are expected to be okay. Witnesses say a man with a knife and gun shot the officers in southwest Atlanta. The suspect was killed by the officers during that unfortunate incident.
Now, overseas Israel. Now, bringing things closer to home, this spring's Greek festival is wrapping up right about now. The festival organized by the Holy Trinity Greek Orthodox Church ended at 6 p.m. It was a three-day event benefiting the church itself while providing great food and entertainment to those that went. Proceeds also help fundraise for youth groups that are involved with the church as well. We spoke to a worker there with what he says this festival is all about. One thing we want to be, do here is just welcome people, make them feel our culture, not just the experience it. We want you to feel the culture. The dates for this year's Fall Greek Festival are not available yet, but last year it went from October 5th through the 8th, so if you missed out, you can look forward to then when it comes back in fall. Now, a celebratory week around the nation for college graduates continues, and that goes for students right here at home in the CSRA. Welcome to the newest members of the Penn College National And you heard it there. Congratulations to those 2024 graduates, especially from Payne College, where you're just seeing right there now. Their commencement speaker was former mayor of Columbia and senior advisor to President Biden, Stephen Benjamin. He advised students to stay focused, much like their time learning through the COVID pandemic and unrest at home and abroad. We caught up with a graduate right after the ceremony. Um, so that has meant a lot because I never expected myself to graduate from college or just even going to college. So I'm the first out of my family to receive a bachelor's degree and the first in my family to graduate from college. Oh yeah, don't break a generation of curses. Certainly no small feat there. She is continuing school, going for her master's degree, and encourage those attending school to keep going even when it gets hard. Again, congratulations to the class of 2024. Now, a bit up north, a scary time in Pennsylvania after a tornado tore through a church. We hear from witnesses after the break. Emily? Well, we can expect to see some rainfall for our area this week. Thankfully, we've had a beautiful weekend, but again, things are turning as we go into our work week. I'll have a check on your full forecast coming up. Brandsmart USA's Memorial Day Sale USA. Up in Pennsylvania, a tornado tore through the roof or tore the roof off of a church while people were gathered inside for a service. Antoinette Delbell reports. This is that confirmed tornado that violently tore through neighborhoods, ripping off roofs and uprooting massive trees in Union Township. Crossroads Ministries Church was having service when it came barreling their way. Pastor Ken Barber says about 100 people, including babies, were inside. Now get a low $2.99 per month lease or get 2.9% APR financing for 60 months on Rogue. Brands March USA's Memorial for mail-in rebate. Or this elite 12-inch firm tight top king mattress is $599.99. Only at Brands March USA. Up in Pennsylvania, a tornado tore through the roof or tore the roof off of a church while people were gathered inside for a service. Antoinette Delbell reports. This is that confirmed tornado that violently tore through neighborhoods, ripping off roofs and uprooting massive trees in Union Township. Crossroads Ministries Church was having service when it came barely their way. Pastor Ken Barner says about 100 people, including babies, were inside at the time. I go out and I see debris flying all over the auditorium, so I immediately tell everybody down in the basement. Great. The pastor's wife, Rhonda, was singing on stage in the middle of her song when she heard the noise. I saw that the lights were flickering, and then I saw that they went out, and I saw, I thought I heard the windows start to shatter, and then the, um, the sound was like a train coming through or something, and then more windows were shattering. The pastor says powerful winds ripped the roof off the office building that's connected to the church. The tornado then took out the steeple, throwing it about 50 feet into the parking lot, crushing cars. The pastor says it's a miracle. No one was seriously hurt. There's no way we should be here. I'm telling you that God was with us. And so I told her we're doing a series called The Promises of God, and I explained to our people that God's promise is to take care of his people. 
and today we believe that God did that. About a half a mile away on Gale Drive, neighbors were all pitching in to help clean up after this tree was pulled out of the ground. Dina Lorenzi came to check on her 77-year-old parents. I was, I was like freaking out on my way over here. I heard the wind, like real strong winds in my house a half a mile away. The tornado also tore off the home's roof, sending it flying several feet across the street. And I didn't even notice it yet, so I'm like, I've just seen this, I'm like, my parents are 77. And I was like, come on. And, uh, yeah, it was really scary. Washington County officials there say there were some people with minor injuries, but they were all treated at the church and no one was taken to the hospital. Just a very scary set of circumstances. This has been a, well, it sounds like a very active tornado season, Emily. I'm hoping we don't have any of that in store for us here in the CSRA, but as you can see, it can, it can come anywhere, even Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. It, it's always severe weather season, really in the United States, but especially in the southeast, any time of year, any time of day, you can see severe weather. So uh, uh, this week might not be different. I don't think that we'll necessarily see tornadoes, but we're definitely going to see rainfall, maybe some thunderstorms throughout our week, unfortunately. But hey, a beautiful weekend. I mean, can we get a round of applause for the weekend? It was, thank you. Thank you, Craig. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, it was beautiful Mother's Day for us. We talked off in those 80s which is what we're seeing right now and again plenty of sunshine throughout the day no rainfall for us and uh, again we haven't had a really nice weekend it feels like in a while but overnight tonight that's when things are going to change up a little bit we can expect to see temperatures drop off into those lower 50s to middle 50s for the overnight lows but cloud cover will come into play for the start of our monday and then rain chances will start to come into play once we get into the early evening hours for us and that's going to last throughout the day tuesday and i know this model behind me is really not showing anything too too extreme but i think that we're all going to see some rainfall throughout the day tuesday so definitely need to have your rain jacket uh, with you throughout the day tomorrow and just kind of keep it with you because you'll need it again on Tuesday to see those uh, scattered showers and thunderstorms. The Storm Prediction Center has put us under a marginal risk for Tuesday for the chance to see some stronger storms moving through and this covers all of the CSRA. So all of our counties here in CSRA are under that marginal risk. So just know, hey, some of those storms could be on the stronger side. So uh, and Tuesday, I definitely have a little question mark on the showers. We're uh, pretty confident that we will see showers. Now, it's just how much and how long it's going to last is very, very tricky. The bottles are not agreeing with me uh, on this one. But we can see a very wet outlook for our day Tuesday. This is a different model than the one I just showed you. So you can see this one's very, very wet, very saturated throughout the whole day Tuesday. And that's what most of the models have been showing. But that one that I just showed you kind of disagreed a little bit. So I wanted to show you guys uh, at home just a couple of different scenarios here. Nonetheless, you definitely need to have your rain jacket. By the time we get to the middle of the week, though, conditions are looking drier for us. And really the end of our day Wednesday and into Thursday looking beautiful, but rain chances come back into play for our Friday. Unfortunately, we could still see some showers and thunderstorms then, but really looking like Tuesday is our best chance of that widespread heavy rainfall for us. But um, here's kind of an hour by hour of what we can expect. I'll go ahead and step off the screen here really throughout the day Tuesday, but those showers are going to start uh, later on in the day tomorrow. So have your rain jacket with you by the middle of the week. We're looking beautiful. I mean, Thursday, Definitely going to need to get outdoors and enjoy that because that's kind of our uh, happy, happy day in the middle of the week. So once we get to Friday, some showers and thunderstorms and Craig, some of those could be on the stronger side. We're definitely keeping a close eye on that and some rain going into the weekend next weekend. Huge heads up. Thanks for that, Emily. Definitely going to keep that umbrella in the car. Now, coming up, one woman was found living in a store sign. How she got up there and her lengthy stay coming up right after the break. First Alert Radar, powered by Jim Hudson Automotive Group. First Alert Radar, powered by Jim Hudson Automotive Group. Hollywood is mourning the loss of legendary filmmaker Roger Corman. His family says he died on Thursday at his home in California. Corman is credited with directing nearly 50 films, 
including the original Little Shop of Horrors. He also produced and acted in more than 300 films, unbelievable, including small roles in The Godfather Part Two and Silence of the Lambs. He truly will be missed. And a woman in Michigan made herself a home on top of a grocery store inside of a rooftop site. She had everything you need, including a computer and a coffee maker. Terry Camp reports on the discovery when someone called the police. At first, I didn't believe it. It's like, how in the world did she get her furniture up there? It was all there inside the Family Fairs Pete sign. The 34-year-old woman had what she needed to live, a computer, printer, coffee maker, even a house plant. There's an outlet on the roof so she could plug in and get electricity. Sarah Asseth recently moved from Colorado to Midland. I go here all the time, so it was just interesting to know that she could have been up there as we were walking in and out. Midland police say the woman was cooperative and agreed to leave when she was found living in the sign on April 23rd. There's a small access door to get inside the enclosure. They say employees at Family Fair refer to her as the Ruth Ninja. Paul Havel, who works nearby, had another name for her. We just kind of referred to her as the ski mask girl. He says she was seen often in the plaza area over the past year, dressed in black, and she also wore goggles. They had called the police a few times by the time the cops got here. They were, she was already gone. Tammy Stair of Midland still has questions. And as busy as it, it is here all the time, that no one would see her going up and down the building. <laughs> so yeah, I wonder if she had a ladder back there or something. Cable says staff at Family Fair have a theory on how she was getting on top of the building. It's the feel that she was climbing the conduit in back, and that's how she was getting up to the roof. Police have advised the woman that she shouldn't return to her year-long perch. It's news to everyone else, but if you've worked in the plaza, you've known about this for a while. Police told local media they believe the woman is homeless and has a job. She declined any help. Just really wild stuff. I wish we could have seen the inside of that setup, but we'll have more news and sports right after this quick break. I'm John Barrow, and as a title Max on your sideline. All right, each season, no matter the sport, you write down your goals, personal and team. There's always one item that makes the list, though. State Harlem Baseball was able to check it off last year, and they could do it again come Friday. The Bulldogs defeated Oconee County in a best of two out of three series. It was their closest series since going against Morgan County at the start of April. With their doubleheader win out of the way, they now look to recreate the same magic they did a year ago, now against Calvary Dayville. If Harlem can string out a pair of wins Friday night, it'll be the first time that they go back-to-back -back since winning a trio of state championships in 81, 82, and 83. Over in South Carolina and the Upper State Tournament, after the Preds dropped against Gray Collegiate and Strom Thurmond fell to Mid-Carolina, Fox Creek will now host an elimination game against Strom Thurmond. The Atlanta Hawks won the lottery for the first time in franchise history. They'll have the number one pick in this year's NBA draft. The Hawks finished 10th in the Eastern Conference this past season. They had 3% chance to win the lottery. One of the worst odds since the lottery began in 1985. It's been almost half a century since the Hawks last had the number one overall pick. Washington, Houston, and San Antonio will follow Atlanta. All right, check this out in single A. We had a little bit of an intruder in the outfield. The Turtles took some time, and the left-handed reliever, Miguel Cotto, came in in the field to pick up the turtle and just took off and took it to the warm-up bench. So, you know, no turtles harmed in the making of the single A game. Amazing stuff right there. Usually seeing a cat or some other animal or a bird intruding on the field, but love to see a turtle. And before we go, happy Mother's Day to all of our viewers. Very selfishly, real quick, shout out my own mom and stepmom back home there. It has just been the day for y'all. It's been a great day here in the CSRA, too. And we'd like to shout out for those who have lost their mothers. You are not forgotten either. You can reach out to a friend or support resources to help with any grief there may be. There are bereavement centers in the CSRA to assist with that. Once again, a huge shout out. One of the most important days, if not the most important day of the year, Happy Mother's Day again to all of those moms watching. Yeah, Happy Mother's Day to my mom, Renee. Shout out to you, Alyssa. I have Tina. Tina's having some fun in uh, Lawrenceburg today. Oh. We had a little FaceTime before the 6 o'clock 
I love it. Fun. I love yeah, it. You won't All catch right. me saying my mom's first name, y'all. Sorry. <laughs> it's always mom. It's always mom. <laughs> y'all, you scared me with this. I know. We it's talked just about this mom. earlier. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, anyway, we're, we'll, we'll just go on. We'll move with the forecast for yeah, us here. here we go. <laughs> some showers expected later on in the day Monday, so definitely have your rain jacket with you. And that's going to continue Tuesday. We can see some showers and thunderstorms dry for the middle of the week. And then again on Friday, we got rain just in the forecast, Craig. Well, thanks for that heads up, Emily. And thank you all for joining us here at News 12 at 6. Be sure to join us at 11 for more news, weather, and sports. Make dinner good.